Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. It is July 23rd, 2018, 640 AM. We are starting with current temperatures pretty mild in the northeast. In fact, maybe a little below mild in some areas after some of the heat we've been dealing with. Still very hot from central or uh, southern California, rather, all the way through Texas and Louisiana. Uh, which is expected to hang around for a little bit. Um, we are going to have some changes, and now this is due to a developing El Nino, um, which will in turn also affect our Atlantic hurricane season. Um, if you guys re understand, uh, August is the month when we uh, really get to that peak hurricane season, and you're looking at the August chart right here of where our hurricanes usually come from and where they go, and it's starting to get pretty wide. This orange area, as we get into August and September, gets bigger and bigger, and a lot of our storms come off the west coast here into the United States, and that is also supported by this chart here, the Mimic chart we watch all the time. You can see the dense storms coming off of the west coast of Africa and moving along that warm water belt we like to call, and then, like I said, they decide to go up the east coast or into the Gulf. But right now, we're going to talk about something else. Um... Guys, the East Coast has been getting some ridiculous amounts of rain. Uh, we actually broke records uh, over the weekend, um, especially on Saturday. Washington, um, uh, Washington Dulls actually in Washington, D.C., uh, Baltimore, and Washington National. Washington Dulls got over five inches of rain. Baltimore just hit almost five inches with 4.79, and Washington National was just over four inches of rain. And that's going to continue to move up the northeast. Uh, like I said, I'm in southeast Pennsylvania, and we had some of the bigger downpours I've seen in a long time over this weekend. Uh, just out of nowhere, too. It would rain for a good hour, and then it would just stop. But you would see the water flowing down the streets, uh, people's property flowing down the streets, basketballs, all sorts of stuff. There's uh, leaves and sticks all over the place. Um... And it's actually, believe it or not, very unusual for this time of year. Now, if you could follow this uh, trail here, this is actually a dip in the jet stream, which is very unusual for the month of July. Usually that, that dip is much higher, and the reason that we're getting all this rain is because of this dip. Now, the dip starts up here, which is allowing the hot air to stay in these uh, southwestern states. That's why we're still dealing with the heat waves and the fires and all that stuff we don't like to see but this dip is what it's what it's allowing things to do is a cooler air is coming down but not without that moisture being pulled up from the caribbean with this um the jet stream right side the right side of the jet stream here we begin here it comes down this way and then it rolls right up the east coast now if i back up you could see how it's kind of developing uh, we did deal with that possible nor'easter. You could see how it kind of swung in a counterclockwise direction over the weekend. That's where the northeast got its rain. And then you could see these storms that just exploded over Florida. Uh, basically, that was yesterday throughout the day. Uh, still continuing right now, but you could see the moisture is going up basically a straight line. And that is due to two things. One, like I said, is the jet stream with this unusual dip going all the way down to Florida and then up right up to the East Coast states. And then we have the Bermuda high pressure, which we always talk about for hurricane season. There is a very high pressure in the Atlantic, which is pinning this moisture. As you can see here, it's very clear. Uh, there's a high pressure here pushing all this moisture against the coast. So it has nowhere else to go. With the dip in the jet stream being a force, basically think of it as a wall. And then the high pressure in the Atlantic is pushing the other way. It is forcing all this moisture right up the coastline in all the eastern states, which is why we have broken records with rainfall. Um, if you look at a couple articles on the Weather Channel app, or the Weather Channel website and app, actually, uh, they clearly say this is extremely odd for July. You could see the jet stream lines moving um, in this direction. Very severe storms involved with this. In fact, um, in the middle of all this, in Iowa, we had two F3 tornadoes on Saturday. Now, that's about 144 miles per hour they were registered at. Um, 
they're not rare to have tornadoes in Iowa this time of year, but it is very, very rare to have tornadoes of that strength um, this time of year. The last time there was an EF3 of that strength was uh, July of 1995 in Iowa, so a uh, very unusual temperature. So I'll take you back to this chart. We can get one more look quick of why this is happening. First, we had this counterclockwise curl with moisture, and then the jet stream decided to take a massive dip and now, like I said, the pressure is pushing all this moisture down the east coast and then the other side of the jet stream is allowing cooler air which is actually the forecast for the almost the rest of the summer going into late summer. Uh, we're going to be dealing with cooler temperatures in the northeast and then very hot temperatures in the west. So that's a bit of a relief for those of us that live in the east but not so much for those of us that live in the west. Now. Uh, moving on, we did look at the lightning chart. You could see these spotty storms are making their way up through the northeast. Um, I'm actually expected to get hit with some thunderstorms today once again. Uh, this lightning is just to the west of me. This lightning here is just to the north of me. So I'm expecting this one here in Virginia to be moving up right into my area um, as early as midday today. Um, as far as county by county, we have uh, flash flood watches. We have... Uh, what is this color is flash, fl uh, flash flood watch? Yes, so this entire area is under flash flood watch uh, for the entire day. This is going to move up into New York. Uh, this is also going to cover New Jersey and Connecticut and Long Island. All the northeastern states will be dealing with this. And then you can clearly see this massive heat that we're still dealing with from southern, uh, southern California all the way through Arizona, down in through Texas, Louisiana. Um, and the thing is, is this is not actually going to ride up the east coast. This jet stream dip is actually blocking that heat. And when you get those jet stream dips, same deal that we had with winter. When it dips down, it allows that cold air from Canada to come down. And if you get an up dip, that means that the warm air is allowed to flow up. So if the dip is this, like here, I'm going to show you actually on a jet stream chart. Um, this is the United States over here, so focus on this area. You could see this clear U we have here. This is very, very unusual for the month of July, which is why the warm air is going up into the western states, and then this dip is blocking the warm air from coming up, but it's not blocking the moisture because the jet stream is an upper air flow, which is pulling the moisture from the Caribbean and from the Gulf over Florida and then up into the east coast states. And then we have this clear section here which is allowing the cooler temperatures to happen so it's going to be a little cooler it's going to be very soggy and this is expected to happen until at least midweek so um, as far as rain rates go guys like I said we broke records in Washington DC and Baltimore and then also in Washington National in uh, Washington um, that also came with some pretty decent sized hail there was uh, hail in Kentucky which measured over five inches. Uh, we had hail falling in Baltimore. Um, also hail was involved with that Washington Dulls uh, record-breaking rain rate. So these storms are no joke. And with those storms, when you see hail, that um, also can bring the high risk of tornadoes. We talked about that in the last video about two days ago. Uh, where we're ex we were expecting some major hail situations going on right around this area just under the Great Lakes because of all these different winds uh, the tornadoes come and then the hail comes so uh, this is over a five day period we have some areas reaching five six inches of rain over the next five days uh, this chart here also supports that you could see here on the left this would be the color you would match it to as far as inches of rain. And you could just see all the way basically from Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, uh, the border right across West Virginia, and then Pennsylvania, four inches of rain. And this is going to be over the next five days. So like I said, this is heading up the northeast into New York. So uh, that doesn't mean that... Um, Georgia and South Carolina are out of the loop because we have a continuing flow going on here. That is why Florida is still dealing with major storms right now. This moisture is going to come straight up and it's going to affect these states once again even though they've already been hit pretty hard. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about really quick is over the next couple months why these temperatures are going to change and why the hurricane forecast has been changing. Uh, late summer and early fall temperatures outlook remain warm in the west turning cooler in the east. Now I don't want to play this video 
uh, because of copyright reasons, so I'll let that ad play out while we read over here. Uh, warmth will be most persistent over the western and southern states into early fall. The central and eastern states will see near or slightly below average temperatures overall. So we're going from uh, basically heat wave after heat wave to an El Nino situation, which may influence the jet stream pattern. And when that is influenced, that means that um, is about to be hurricane season for the Atlantic Ocean. And that's why I kept telling you guys that uh, for those of you that were saying, oh, where are all these hurricanes? There's no hurricanes, no hurricanes. We got to remember Hurricane Harvey last year was in the month of August. And then August, moving forward, we had 10 named storms in a row. So really August, September, and even into uh, most of October is when the Atlantic Ocean really fires up with hurricanes. So um, don't let your guard down is basically what I'm saying. So this is a little chart here. Um, I know it's a very simple chart, but it does really explain what's going to happen. Um, basically from central U.S. down to uh, or our, uh, north central U.S. down to central U.S. and then it curls down just over Louisiana. It dips down into the Carolinas a little bit and then up into the northeast will be uh, below average. Um, and then we could see above average high temperatures for the far west and then the midwest moving into the south. Um, uh, slightly above average temperature so we could see this change happening and that is where you want to look out We're talking the uh, for the, the, the change in the ocean the Atlantic Ocean I'm talking about so we'll go back to this chart real quick once again this is a high pressure situation there's always a high pressure going on in the Atlantic Ocean uh, which actually directs our hurricanes and keeps them low into the islands before they decide to come up the East Coast or go into the Gulf so this is a perfect example of how the jet stream and the high pressure in the Bermuda Atlantic not only controls our hurricanes but it controls the weather in the US as well and it's the exact reason why we are getting this ridiculous amount of moisture and the tornado situations happening late in the year for tornado season especially in Iowa uh, with those two F3 tornadoes in one day which is completely ridiculous uh, like I said 1995 was the last time there was an EF three tornado in Iowa uh, so that is a very rare situation uh, with that said I think that's all we're gonna cover for right now um, it is a work day so I will be back later on this afternoon but guys these rain rates are pretty crazy uh, northeast uh, just stay prepared we're gonna be dealing with flooding uh, the coastal issues will be uh, will be a big deal as well um, it'll be a bit windy on the coast um, and uh, rising river rates we need to check out the rivers I'm going to do a video on river um, depths and where where they expect to crest we already have some rivers that are reaching levels where they're gonna start flooding the surrounding areas so uh, Ventu Sky really quick let's take a look um, yeah this is absolutely supporting those other charts now you can see this spin going on here this is the high pressure in the Bermuda Atlantic it's always going in this type of a direction and again it's pressing all this moisture going right up to the East Coast you can see these deep reds the deeper the red the higher the inches of rain we go by inches uh, we're looking 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, and 5, moving all the way up through Chesapeake Bay, Delaware, and then we can expect that to hit New York and then the Upper East States in the north and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, for those of you in the northeast, you already know this. We've been dealing with a lot of rain. Florida, totally saturated, um, and it's not expected to stop until midweek. So, um with that said, guys, here are two possible hurricanes. One of them is already at Invest in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, one of these is riding pretty close to uh, Mexico. We'll see what happens with this by the Baja region. Um, again, very rare for hurricanes to make it up to uh, Southern California. Um, I do not think this will be the case for these, but nonetheless, these are two pretty significant um, forecasted hurricanes that could potentially be forming in the Pacific Ocean. Um, I think that is it for now, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Again, it is 6.55 a.m. We are July 23rd, 2018. I hope everyone has a good Monday. It's going to be a wet work, uh, wet work week for the uh, Northeast and the East Coast and very hot for the West. So I will be back this afternoon. Hope everyone has a great day. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.